I'm here with Dr. Pamela Hieronymi, who is a philosophy professor at the University of California, Los Angeles. Thanks so much, Dr. Hieronymi, for joining us. Of course. Thank you for having me. So let's start talking about forgiveness. When, when people hear this word forgiveness, what do they usually mean? Um, it's a great question. I'm not sure what they usually mean. Uh, something like getting over a wrong, a wrong done to you. Um, but, uh, not every getting over a wrong done to you counts as forgiveness. So, uh, if you were to just kind of forget about it, move on, that's not going to count as forgiveness. Or if you were going to think, ah, it wasn't such a big deal. That's kind of excusing. That's not forgiving. Um, so it's a particular way of getting over some wrong that's been done to you that counts as forgiving. Um, and that's actually part of what's um, interesting or philosophically puzzling ab about it is to try to figure out what that way is. Okay, so I invite you to tell us what, what do you think of when we're digesting this concept of forgiveness? Uh, so, well, one of my very early papers, uh, I wrote about forgiveness. And in that paper, I just accepted um, uh, Bishop Butler's definition um, or what people think of as Bishop Butler's definition. He was um, an English philosopher from a while back, uh, which is the overcoming of resentment. So, uh, so the idea is that if you have resentment and as you overcome that resentment, that is going to count as forgiveness. I say that I just picked up that definition because I think people actually think of forgiveness in a more broad way than that. Um, they might think of it as, they might think, well, I don't really resent, but I, I have some disappointment or some other hard feelings and they want for, to use forgiveness for overcoming those. And I don't want to argue about that. I think that might well count as forgiveness. But I picked up uh, Bishop Butler's, um, what people take to be his idea that forgiveness is the overcoming of resentment, and then had the worry that I just um, articulated a second ago that, well, not every overcoming of resentment is going to be forgiveness. Um, if, if I realized that I was mistaken, you actually didn't wrong me at all. My forgiveness, my resentment's going to go away, but it's not because I forgave you. It's because you, I realized you didn't wrong me. Or um, if I um, go into hypnosis and just forget about the whole event, I'm not going to uh, resent you anymore. But it's not because I forgave you. It's because I, I forgot. Um, so there's, or if I just decide you're not worth my time, right? Now I'm holding you in contempt, but that's, I, I, I get past it, but I'm not forgiving you. So, um, so it's not just any overcoming of resentment. It's, you have to overcome the resentment in the right way or for the right reasons. And that posed a puzzle, um, which is what are those reasons? And, uh, and in particular, it seemed to me that it, for anything to count as forgiveness, you had to keep thinking that the wrong that was done to you was a real one, a serious one, that the person who wronged you was responsible for the wrong. They weren't, they weren't somebody you could just write off, that they were serious, uh, a, a serious moral member of the moral community, and uh, that you deserve not to be treated that way, that that, that was something that, that you have the ability to, to object to. But it seemed to me that those three things um, would ground resentment. So the question was, how do you overcome resentment without undermining one of those three claims? And, uh, and, and so that was the kind of puzzle of that paper. You're talking about doing something, forgiving, and, and mm -hmm. doing it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. And you're also talking about feelings. So is, mm -hmm. is forgiveness a mental doing? Is, it, is forgiveness an emotion? Is forgi what, is, what is forgiving someone? Mm -hmm. um, so that's also another question that I don't want to have a ton of, I mean, I don't want to really take too many sides on it. 
Some people think forgiving is a decision. Um, and so they think of it very much like an action. And then they think that the emotions are supposed to follow later. Um, some people think that it's um, a change of heart. Mm. And so it's got to be some sort of um, emotional shift. Um, like I said, I, I think that it, um, that if you forgive and you continue to sort of seethe with, with resentment, probably things are not, that's probably not a good situation. That's pr probably, if, probably at some point we're going to doubt whether you really have forgiven. Um, so that's why I think that that, um, that that idea of Butler is that it's the overcoming of resentment is a good one. But there's another issue, which is um, how we relate to these emotions, like, um, like resentment. So I, was, I just said, well, you have to forgive, but you have to do it in the right way or for the right reasons. And, um, and it's part of my sort of larger research uh, project to think that a, a lot of our states of mind are things that we do for our own reasons, not just things that happen to us. So, um, you know, so so you're you can catch cold or age or have a have a ringing in your ears. Those are things that happen to you. Um, but um, but believing or resenting um, or um, being indignant about something, those are things that you have reasons for. And so if you ask, well, what's my relation to my own resentment? I think you have two different ways of relating to a state of mind like that. Um, one is just the same way you relate to your allergies, right? That is to say, you can take actions that you predict will affect it. So if, if you're in a really bad mood, you could think like, okay, I'm gonna go out for a nice walk and get my mind off of that, this. There you're kind of managing your mood, you're taking an action that you think will affect it. But a different way is by changing your opinion about its topic. So with resentment, um, if I resent you for um, insulting me, and then I think about it and I get more information, like, oh, well, you didn't really know what had just happened to me a few minutes before, I'm going to revise my resentment, but I'm not, I'm not managing it like I'm managing my allergies. I'm changing it. I'm revising it in the same way I might change or revise a belief when I get new information. So, so can, I, mm -hmm. can we control when we forgive and who we forgive? Is, is forgiveness then something we have some kind of voluntary control over? So I don't think we have voluntary control over it. But I don't think that voluntary control is the only kind of control there is. So, um, so we have voluntary control over things when we can do them for any reason we think makes it worth doing. So I can raise my right hand, I can run for office, I can re-landscape my yard, you know, for whatever reason I like to, to make a, I could do it for a joke, I could do it to please my partner, I could do it to spite my partner whatever I want. Um, but states of mind uh, for which we have our own reasons, like, so take belief, because that's a very easy case. Um, sometimes you have reason that, that you want to believe something, but it's um, what, what I'll call the wrong kind of reason for believing. So maybe I'm super worried um, because, um, my spouse had a, had a test, had a, had a lump that was, is being tested and the test results haven't come back. And I'm worried that it's going to be malignant. And so I'm super worried about, and, and I can't sleep. But I also have a big uh, event tomorrow that I have to get some sleep for. Now I have, a, and I realize that if I could just believe that this test is gonna be negative, I'd get, my, get some sleep. Well, I can't believe the test is going to be negative to get some sleep, even if I think it's totally worth it to even if, to have a, 
a false belief, it, maybe the belief will turn out to be false overnight. I don't, it's fine. It's worth it. I need to get to my event. Can't believe for that reason. Whereas I can count sheep. I can, you know, uh, make some more milk. I can do other things in order to try to get some sleep, but I can't believe in order to try to get some sleep. So does that mean my belief is not in my control? Right? Well, it's not in my voluntary control. I don't control it in the same way I control whether I take an aspirin or count sheep. But um, it's not like a headache, right? It's not like a ringing in my ears. I believe what I think is true. Mm -hmm. And when I have new information, I change my beliefs change because my opinion has changed because I've changed my opinion. So those two different ways of of relating to like a belief that I can change my opinion about it or um you know like if I could figure out how some way to um so you know if the test result is in I can call and give myself a belief about it right so I can take steps to, to do things about it those same two ways I think are available to us with resentment that we can um we can sometimes take action that will we predict will um, manage our resentments, like going out for a walk or something. Um, but we also, our resentment will change as we change our take on the situation. And sometimes, in fact, one way that we want to manage, now I'm going to bring these two really mm -hmm. close together. Please. One, one way that we want to manage our resentment is by convincing ourselves to kind of reframe the situation. Right? So, so when we kind of think, well, come on, it wasn't really that big of a deal, right? That's a way of trying to manage your resentment by getting yourself to reframe what you think about, how, how you think about the wrong done. Right? But whether that works depends on whether you can convince yourself that the new frame is a good one, right? So you're kind of managing yourself by trying to get yourself to re rethink the topic. So when we're thinking about forgiveness, typically there would be someone who's done a wrong or potentially done a wrong. There would be a, the offender mm -hmm. and that person needs to be forgiven. And there's the offended who needs to do the forgiving. Okay. Is this, is this the right way to set it up that there'd be these two? Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so some people say something like, well, if you want to forgive, you need to feel some sort of empathy for the person in the other position. Right. Is that is that true? Or what does that mean? What would it mean for forgiveness to require empathy? And do you think it does? It's a it's a it's a really great question. Does it require empathy? Um, I don't. I doubt it does require empathy, hmm. but, um, but um, what a lot of people have think is that, it, that empathy is sufficient for forgiveness. So you're asking whether it's necessary for forgiveness. Um, a lot of people will, will think that it's sufficient or at least that, um, uh, that if, you, if, if your resentment is sort of ruining your life and, and um, making your life hard, and you want to forgive, but you're finding it difficult, people will suggest that you try to extend empathy to the, um, the wrongdoer. And there's a phrase even, uh, to understand all is to forgive all. Right? So, so there's some people who think that once you really understand the point of view and the experience of the wrongdoer, that you will come to um, no longer resent the wrong done to you. What do you think about that? I think that's incorrect. Um, I think that um, uh, it. So, so not, so compassion is another word that people use. Okay. So the um, in, in that article I wrote, um, I was taking up the, uh, an, a, an article by a man named David Norvitz who who had suggested that compassion was the sort of route to forgiveness, hmm. um, and. And I agree that compassion or empathy for somebody's point of view can, um, 
distance you a little bit from your own from your own resentment because you're now stopping and understanding their point of view. Mm. And so you kind of you kind of put yourself into their point of view. But I don't think that that has to undermine resentment or lead you to give up on your resentment because it doesn't have to lead you to give up on your own point of view. Right. I mean, so I think we're complicated people and emotionally agile beings. And so I think I can understand your point of view and see why you did what you did without giving up on my own. And in fact, it might be that the better I understand why you did it, the more I resent you because the better I understand how little my interests mattered in your world. And, and I, might, I might really understand why they mattered so little to you given you know, the, the abuse that you suffered or the stress that you were under or, or what have you. And yet I might come right back to my own position and say, but that's not okay. You don't, you know, that's, and yet that doesn't excuse what you did to me. Right. So, um, so that was part of the, um, the puzzle that I was, that I was trying to address is, well, how do I let go of, as people sometimes say, let go of my resentment Mm -hmm. um, in a way that doesn't amount to just condoning the wrong that was done to me or saying, or doesn't just amount to treating it like it was no big big deal or treating me like I don't, like like that's something you can do to me that's just okay. Um, And so the, 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 answer I got to, well, so, so I, I thought, well, how do we understand this? Um, and I thought, well, let's look at the, the kind of easiest case of forgiveness, which I thought was the case of, of apology, of like a really sincere, heartfelt apology where somebody shows contrition and remorse and asks for forgiveness and you then forgive them. And I thought, why should that apology make any difference? What's, what's happening in that exchange where somebody is, is um, seriously um, contrite and seeking, and seeking forgiveness through an apology? And the thought I came up with is that my resentment is a way of um, sort of marking the wrongness of what was done to me that um, if you insult me or, um, or, or belittle me in some way, um, that you thereby kind of make a statement in our world. You, you make the statement that that action was okay. And that's sort of a broader uh, thing, I think, that, that every time we act, we sort of make these little implicit statements that what we do is, is permissible. Um, and so when you wrong me, you sort of say to the world, this is an okay thing to do. Um, and that my emotional response, that my resentment sort of functions in our life together to say, no, it's not an okay thing mm. for, for you to have done to me. So that, so that my emotional response in recognizing it's like my emotional response is recognizing a threat that's that's existing in the claim that your past action has made and and that's why it feels like you know just understanding isn't enough right because just understanding it it can feel like if i were to stop presenting then i would stop i would be condoning Hmm. but maybe i'm sorry go ahead so, so where I wanted to keep track of the apologizing, mm-hmm. where does that fit in? Yeah, so that's what I was about just about to say that um, that that it seems that then if you apologize, and now this is all getting very metaphorical, but um, the thought was if you apologize, it's like you're trying to retract your own past statement. You're trying to say, oh no, I I I recognize that that was a mistake. I was wrong. You, you, you don't deserve to be treated that way. And I wish I could take it back. Um, and that somehow 
when the um, person apologizes, they, um, they make possible your ratifying that retraction in a way 